This morning I was reading a great book uh, by Bo Bennett, and that's B-O-B-E-N-N-E-T-T. Uh, the name of the book is Logically Felicious. And oh, this is funny, I've talked about fallacies forever, but uh, I don't use the word felicious much. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, that's kind of funny. Anyway, uh, I saw a fallacy here that uh, I hadn't seen the exact version of that he mentioned, and I, I love it. Uh, it is the appeal to the moon, and this is something that uh, you, people will do pretty commonly. I bet you've heard this. As a matter of fact, one of the fun things about logical fallacies is when you learn a new one, go out and purposefully commit it a few times. Commit that fallacy. Go out and, and say something to somebody and use it. And in doing so, uh, you'll notice that they don't catch on to it. Uh, if they are like 99% of people, it, they'll say, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and it just helps it kind of get locked into your head. Don't hurt anybody to do this. But so, so the appeal to the moon fallacy is saying, well, if we could put somebody on the moon, then we can do this other thing. And that just makes, that just, it, it doesn't follow. Um, so if you say, you know, I, I can bench press 5,000 pounds, and somebody says, well, no, you can't. And you say, hey, people said we couldn't go to the moon, and we did. So I can bench press 5,000 pounds. Well, they have nothing to do with each other. Maybe you can find a way to bench press 5,000 pounds, but it has nothing to do with man going to the moon. And another time we'll talk about this whole fallacy of the, the we fallacy. Uh, we put a man on moon. Who, you and me or somebody else? <laughs>